So they'll be calling you a radical. Here we go again. So guy flying his drone catches footage. The very bottom link of all these links I'll post, it's right there. Of a gray headed home, a gray mama. That's that time of year headed home. Wash up fighting for her life. Starvation. All my work's been verified all these years. I mean, this is the greatest marine biologist in history. You know, the statistical probability when I hypothesized this, when Fukushima happened, because, of course, no one knew. Of course, not even I know because it never happened before, not in the history of mankind. Never happened before. So I hypothesized that they weren't going to do shit. And I knew, I knew, I knew that no nuclear energy reactor on Earth could handle an eight on the Richter scale, let alone a nine. I was out in the Energy Solutions dump site protesting the Italian waste the day that it happened. And I got home, I saw the TV then, and I fell asleep. And I don't know why, something just, I turned on the TV, and the very first thing I saw, I'm like, what the fuck? And because I knew we had a live cam on the barge because there had been accidents at Fukushima. I mean, Fukushima had always been on the top of my list as the worst nuke reactor, the worst water boiler. I mean, I used to do lecture after lecture, your top 10 most dangerous nuke reactors in the world. And I had it number one, Sinanufri, number two, Diablo Canyon, number three, Fukushima. Diachi, number four, Fukushima Diani, Oyster Creek, Indian Point, you know, and when I saw it, I'm like, oh, fuck no. And then I see him come across, and they said nine, I immediately knew, because I knew that the scale they use in Japan doesn't have a nine. You know, it's kind of like the IEA's Malice from an Inception disaster scale. Now, who the fuck sets a fucking scale from one to seven? Oh, they do. Malice from inception. The same people that build nuclear reactors on the ring of the fucking fire. Now tell me this. Do you think that's malice? When they built those reactors, you think they didn't know that eventually there would be fucking a mega quake? Just like they know at Diablo, yet they keep it open. So first, before I talk about this and the well of collapse and Kevin Lynch's historic, historic work, it's been a long fucking hard journey. And it's wore me out. Oh, then so. Way past wore me out. Zarpupu, if that's a fucking election, <laughs> talk about pseudo de facto on Balco on chemo, that ain't no fucking election. It's like this. Did you vote for Putin in the last election? Fuck no, I never voted for that scumbag. I can't stand that scumbag. Boom, car wreck, you're dead. Next election. Did you vote for our scumbag fucking Putin in the election? Fuck no, I never voted for that dirtbag fucking piece of shit. Boom. Flown him in the teeth. Poison. Next election. Did you vote for Putin in the election? Fuck no, I can't stand that oligarch thieving piece of shit who fucking looted this whole fucking country, that psycho fucking Peter the Great fucking wannabe fucking fake historian. Bro, plane crash. Next election. You vote for Putin in the election? Fuck no. <laughs> right in front of everyone. That's how brass he's got this election. You vote for Putin? Are you going to vote for Putin? Did you vote for Putin? Oh, I voted for Putin. I love Tsar Pupu. Capital P-U. Plutonium Putin. Plutonium Putin. I love Putin. Oh, fuck. So we go back to Clinton. Clinton stood up to him. Clinton knew that's, I mean, please give me 1998 back. Please, please give me 1998 back. You know, oh my God, please give me that. No inflation. Fuck, what a happy fucking time it was. Fuck, downsizing the military. Fuck, this country was fucking. And here comes poo poo. Imperialism is born. Clinton knew. Clinton fucking told everybody, oh no, don't you trust this guy. And by the way, speaking of Clinton, speaking of Putin, speaking of, as I said for years, all my kids know it, all these millions of cliches I got. 
Never trust a man with neat hair. <laughs> I mean, these passive aggressive. Who's the most passive aggressive monster in human history? Well, at least in modern history. That's Putin. Well, what is he talks like this? He's soft spot. What are you talking about? I'm not doing anything wrong. I go back to when Bush met with him. Remember when Bush, even Condoleezza Rice rolled her eyes and he, remember that Bush meeting? Oh my God. Uh, uh, remember he stands there and he says, I looked. Putin's standing right next to him. Press conference. Reporter, State Department, both teams set up there. I looked right into his eyes and I saw into his soul. And you look at the side view, Putin's rolling his eyes going, oh my fucking God, is this guy a fucking moron. And so we're off. Saudis do it. Why? Putin's thinking, oh my God. Imperialist Saudis do 9-11 and they're going across the world and bombing the shit out of Iraq and Afghanistan. And he's like, whoa. Talk about open the door and let him in. So he decides the devil went down to Georgia looking for some soul. He's going into Georgia. And then he started to realize the Americans couldn't tell you the Georgia that borders Florida from the Georgia that borders Cromaria. No fucking clue. And he's like, I thought this was the big industrial, the jig tough guys, the Cheney, the Wolfer, it's the fucking Brimmer fucking tough guys. The Cobalt Saddam Hussein is a weapons of mass destruction. Before I forget, that's the second biggest lie in human history. Well, the third biggest lie is Saddam Hussein had weapons. When he full well mile now. What's the second biggest lie? Barack Obama told it 13 years ago today. Standing on the White House lawn. The plume is coming over us right now. Scientists tell us it's safe. I will keep you in the know to know what I know. When Cheryl Mills' emails were coming out the same fucking day. They're out there. Google it. Send to Hillary. Send an email. Cheryl's emails. Uh, the steam that was released. What's going on at Fukushima is radioactive. Read it. Don't go outside. If you have, I mean, wear a hat. Take a shower. Eat some iodine pills. Wash your clothes. Cheryl Mills, his staffer. The same time, blatant bold faced lies. Saddam so Hussein has weapons I'm not, when they blatant full. I mean, I was in Vienna in those days. And, I mean, I used to talk to Hans. You know, fuck, everybody knew he didn't. But America went away. Bloodthirsty America went away. What's the number one lie in the history of this country? Bar none. Look at our energy. <laughs> Your energy is clean, green. I mean, they opened the faucet and they never shut it off. Pop, 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 oppy, drop, they never stopped. So, back to the well catastrophe. So, this ecological catastrophe on the Pacific Ocean, I mean, like I said, Putin, I mean, we can really draw a line in 2000, can't we? I mean, everybody was white, wild. I remember, I got some great stories. I was in Vegas that fucking night. Whoa. It was supposed to be the biggest party in the history of the world, but remember they had terror spheres, so nobody went. Oh good, I got some stories I cannot tell on screw tube. So it was like you could sense it, right? You could feel it. You know, a few days later Annika dies. You know. Fuck, it was just like, what a horrible fucking century. The first quarter century. It's like Putin stamped imperialism on the fucking world. And the rest of the world followed suit. You got two wannabe old geezers that want to be fucking Caesars. Fucking. Who covered up Fukushima. 9-11 to 3-11. So Putin fucking wins. Putin's got to be the most, well, I guarantee he's the most important man in history, at least since 1945, he runs the world. He completely dominates and controls the world. He controls politics in the United States. You know, and I like how they're worried that uh, in, YouTube video is going to, oh, fuck, please, please, fuck. They, they, who's responsible for smashing the First Amendment? Boom. That was the, oh, uh, Trump won because of Pope. Oh, really? It isn't because Democrats stayed home because they didn't like Hillary? 
look at it. That's, I mean, oh God. The whole nightmare. I mean, in love with presidents. But you go back to Putin. So Clinton called it out. Clinton says, no, no, no. Bush, they were too busy in Afghanistan and Iraq while he just fucking ran rickshaw. He's going to put back the old Russian empire, isn't he? Okay. Lays down the map. He claims Alaska. That two cents an acre. Ah, bullshit. You know, Russia, the Russian Empire claimed most of Western Canada, much of Oregon, much of the state of Washington, a lot of California, the Russian River, the old Russian Empire. He thinks he's Peter the Great. I, I can't wait till he train, changes the city. You know, he's supposedly a, a commoner from St. Petersburg. I got a bridge I want to sell you. Fucking talk about a bad James Bond movie come true. Little polonium to the T. Mikhail Lessons fucking unlearned. Do you know about Mikhail Lessons? Remember, remember the fifth. How about Anna? You know, I have her autograph book here somewhere. I mean, I got so many books here. So when's he going to rename Stalingrad? That's Volgograd. When's he going to name Petrograd, Peter City, Peter the Great? Then it was Leningrad, right? Back to St. Peter. When's it going to be Putingrad? Maybe that's where I'll tag this. Putingrad. I've done thousands and thousands of videos and lectures about Putin. Clear back to the fucking 90s. I knew what the fuck he was up to. So then you fast forward and you get a oh, bummer dumber. And this is an unarguable fact. You can argue with me. You know, people used to argue with me about things that I would report about Obama. Who knew that I was really good at killing people? Now his own staffers and all these books are out verifying everything Kevin Black said. So you know the fight between you know Biden and Obama do not like each other. And Axelrod and Rahm Emanuel, the Fukushima cover-up kingpins in the situation, and, you know, John, uh, you know, Holdren, is Rahm Emanuel the ambassador in Japan now? What, 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 what? The Fukushima kingpins, the cover-up of Fukushima kingpins? You know, Biden and them hate each other. And you go back to Putin. When he was told that they invaded Ukraine under Obama's reign, I was over there. I was over there in 2015. And the whole group that oversees these theaters is to Obama, laying out the dossier, laying it out. What, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? It's like, well, uh, do you know what he did? Do you know he took the whole thing and just handed it to Biden? He says, here, you deal with it. He did the same thing on Fukushima. I'll keep you abreast. You know what I know. Obama Dummer was just that. Obama Dummer. Oh, fuck. How pitiful. He, on Fukushima, I know the word for word what happened in the Situation Room. He didn't do anything. He punted. He leaned. To Haas Cartwright. Remember Haas Cartwright? Make it so. Send the USS Reagan and radiate your own men. Remember that? I was over there the whole time doing all that work on the USS Reagan. We never did the Supreme Court. What? What? So they ate. All these ships were sent into entombment to evacuate. The Joint Chief of Staffs, the head guy was the Navy Admiral, remember? And he said, no, I want the whole island evacuated. All United States military personnel. That's hundreds of thousands and civilians. Rachel was there. She can verify. So was Kathy. I wanted. They were all there. They can all verify all this. Rachel's verified every bit of this to me. And... They're fighting that interview with John Holdren. That John Holdren, that girl that gets the second interview because he's just railing on Trumpism. She, I prepped her for that second interview. I'm the one that put her up to and got all the questions. And he let the classified cat out of the bag on Fukushima. He says, we were there for hours arguing over. They wanted to send her the ships. And then remember, it was Haas Cartwright. Yeah, that's him. Haas Cartwright. That's his name. Head of the Marines. You know, I have a lot of connections, of course, with the Marines. My nuked to death, dead father, the Hollywood Marine. So, they come back and they want to send the Reagan and the Admiral's, oh, no way, no way, you're right. Hold on, make it so. So, remember, it's the same Haas Cart, excuse me, Haas Cartwright, make it so. And it was Holdren and Axelrod and a manual that backed out the entombment process to protect the nuclear industry. That's an argument. That's out there. So Obama wasn't even really interested. I mean, he read off the teleprompter 
13 years ago today on St. Patrick's Day. Scientists are telling us there's no need to take precautions. They wouldn't use the meltdown. The plume from the hydrogen off the nuclear disaster is coming over us right now. No need to take any precautions when Cheryl Mills' emails are going out at the same time saying it's radioactive. Radnat was the radiation detection air course placed all over the freaking world to protect us. Gina McCarthy's head up immediately was taken offline. Taken down. The I know the professor group that was doing all this work and the studies at Berkeley, he was railroaded. I'm friends with the professor in Tokyo that was jailed and railroaded. I mean, Kevin, I mean, one person on earth warned you. One person. I mean, you know how people in those days used to come back to Japan, come right up to me, including NATO Khan, the prime minister, came up to me at Del Mar and told me, thank you, Kevin, Blanche, for all your work. I mean, I wasn't sequestered in Japan. My videos were getting out there. I knew. I knew for a fact. I used to do the due diligence on these reactors at the water school business. We're the number one school business in the country. I'm the guy that, yeah, that, he, that, who built, you that's who built these reactors, these water boilers, these G Mach 1, Mach 2 water boilers. I knew for a fact, all my work had proved the spent fuel pools couldn't handle a 7.7, 7.8, 7.9. The cores could not handle an 8. This was a 9. I knew it was gone. It wasn't no tsunami. I knew they'd blown up. I knew there was in full blown up meltdown, and I reported it to the fucking world, and I got viciously attacked for it. And, I mean, I knew that I was up against it. I knew it was going to be a tough fight. Hands up, my dudes. But... Did I know that they were this ruthless and the American populace and their useful idiots would go after me also? No, but I was right. I hypothesized it's going to genocide the Pacific Ocean. It's going to cause a heat dome. So back to desire Putin. So Bush, Cheney wouldn't do anything. Obama, nothing. He he was told we need to have a strong answer to this. He's got to be stopped, blah, 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 blah. I'm not interested. Just like food, I'm not interested. Now, Obama promised us he would keep us in the know 13 years ago today. And he never mentioned the word again until right before he's leaving office on Jimmy. Where's Johnny Carson when we need him? Where's Lenny Bruce when we need him? Where's the great George Carlin when we need him? Carlin died right after that. I've always felt that that was suspicious. Also, you know, he had gone off on Bush. From that. I mean, he died out of nowhere shortly thereafter while I was in the bone marrow transplant fighting for my life. So, wasn't interested. So he goes on Jimmy Kimmel. Jimmy Kimmel's like, uh, do you ever get calls in the middle of the night like Hillary's ads? Her attack ads were on you? And Obama's like thinking, you know, Obama says, yeah, of course I did. I'm president of the United States. Oh, do you have any examples? Yeah, like when Fukushima happened, they came in and woke me up in the middle of the night. Jimmy, blah, 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 Kimmel, I live in L.A. What's Santa Susana? Blah, 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 what's Fukushima? Fucking... Okay. The typos at your feet. You know the typhoon. Just the great earthquake that was a 9.0. See if this is still going. I heard it make a noise. That shifted the axis of the earth. He calls it a... Let's make sure this is still going. It's happened to me before. Oh, yeah, I'm still running against the wind. Against the wind. So, he calls it a typhoon. Now, remember that we were told that the earthquake that happened in 2005, New Year's Eve, Jakarta, was the biggest earthquake. There'll never be another earthquake like that. That's a thousand year earthquake. Then it happens six years later. 9.0. He calls it a typhoon. No wonder fucking Putin's been able to play these guys. They're morons. Of course, then, I'm at the White House that night. Hillary's running against Trump. Everybody expected him to win Trump. I've got my Russian hat on. I'm holding up my bed. Trump God. Hillary God. Trump God, Hillary God, the Russians have occupied the White House, they will never leave, I'm thinking. And it sure had nothing to do with First Amendment and YouTube videos. It's way bigger than that. I mean, that's the reason we got rid of the First Amendment? It's outrageous. So, the big upset happens. Trump wins. 
So it's like a church night. It was so quiet and eerie there. I could write a whole book just on that night. I get onto the train. There's a young girl with a Clinton hat on. Just her and I on that, you know, the beautiful subway in BC because I got to get over to the bus depot because those buses go at 3, 4. They go at 245, 345, 445, 545. All, a lot of the workers and the maids and the people that work in New York City take the buses in from D.C. every morning. They're cheap. You can ride it for like 10 bucks. And I'm like, so I get on the subway. She's on it. I remember the light above her head. And I took this great picture. She was <laughs> sobbing. And the light said I was on the blue line. And the blue line was in light pink. It's red. Chip Carvel's pink. It stinks. So I go through and I get to Trump Towers right there with she was going to break the jar of a center seat. And I think Trump just owned that property. And anyway, I get off the bus. The bell's ringing. It's early in the morning. People are in the circle lining up at the cathedral for breakfast. They feed the homeless. And I walked over to Trump. Oh, my God. I never seen anything like it. Fuck, it was beyond a war zone. I never seen anything like that. They would brought in truckloads of dirt. There were helicopters, military. I mean, it was insanity. And I get word. Somebody calls me and says, get this. I be he's headed in. What? To Trump Towers. Why would he be flying as their jet? First one there. Then, when he gets elected, the first one they meet with at Mar-a-Lago, not Victor Orban. <laughs> That's his new buddy. Was Abby. Why would that be? And they blocked out the windows of Mar-a-Lago. Or days. What do you think they're talking about? A fucking golf game? Fuck what happened to a bee blows my fucking mind. It really blows my mind. So, here's I'm at the White House because I help do the peace vigil there all the time, which don't even get me going what's happened to the peace vigil. Don't even get me going. Oh, God. So, it's supposed to be an anti-nuclear vigil. So, all we hear, people protest, one of our Putin's puppets, Putin. I'm telling them, they're all Putin's puppets. So, we know that whole four years. So, then Biden gets the reins. And he does it. He's been telling everybody he's done it. He's already done it to Cromeria. He took Cromeria right under your freaking nose, right under Obama's reign. Just went and took Georgia under Bush's reign. You know, so what's going to stop him? No resistance. He's just going to keep on going. The old Russian Empire, you know, until he, I guess, gets to Moscow, Idaho. And so he goes in. He invaded Ukraine two years ago. Holy fuck, but he met resistance for the first time. And I mean, I don't think he had any fucking clue. Holy fuck. And then he ratcheted it up. I mean, you go back to Anna. I mean, she wrote that great book. She was born in Brooklyn. When he murdered her in cold blood on his birthday, it was his birthday in October, I think 17th. He shot her on his birthday in cold blood. She was the investigative journalist that was throwing him under the bus on all this. You know, these invasions. And how it was really unfolded. That book, by the way, Putin's Dirty War, that she wrote, what, 99, 2000, 2001. That fucking book is a masterpiece, by the way. I have an autograph, but edition of it here somewhere. I got to fucking, I got, I got to find that and dig it out. No. What the hell is that? No. It's here. It's here. Is that it? No. But that's a good book. Oh, that's a fucking book. Where the hell did I put that? There's Carter. Huh. I'm going to have to get serious. I'm going to get digging to find that. So, anyway... fell down. I don't want to find it. So some big. <laughs> so 2000. Isn't that where it went Putin? Well, Putin actually got an office in the late 90s. When? No, oh, there it is. No, that ain't it. That's the one I was, that's one of them I was looking for. Is that it? No. That's a good book. Trotsky to the head. What the hell did 
I put that? Oh yeah, that's a good one. It's a really good one. Oh God, that's a big book. Maybe that's it. Ah, nope. I might have bought, loaned it to someone and forgot. I'm famous for that. I'm always borrowing books to people. Trotsky to the head. Where the? Oh, well, here's a good one. That's a great book. Got it. Now put it back in my spot. What the hell? I must have borrowed it to someone. So the resistance to either, so that's not a president. That's a czar. Kings in Russia are called czars. Yeah, I do I think he's bloodlines of uh, Nikolai? Well, we know that Prince Harry is. Remember, they were all related. So this whole madness, 2000, 9-11 to 3-11. You know, the, another Wells washed up. The Grays, Kevin Blanche. I did all this work in real time. You know, I was all over this before Fukushima happened. I was the anti-nuker, but I spent all... So I just got off the phone with my beautiful little granddaughter in New York. You know, all the years I spent in New York doing all that fucking work. We were fighting Epstein fucking clear back then. Back then. I'll, I mean, play back the tape. There's lots of YouTube videos out there. Wow. Look, sound the alarm. Putin's, who knows what he's up to again. What's he win? What did they say? He won 87% of the vote. Uh, please give me 1990 back. Give me Stockton. Give me Long. Give me Michael Jordan. It's like I was at that game. In fact, it's right here. You don't believe me? Let me show you. Get your merit patch. I got more shit. All you guys that covered up Fushimi, you earned your merit patch. Where the fuck is that? Did I move that? Jason made me that in South Carolina. Great activist. They did a lot of work for me. See my gypsy. Hmm. Well, maybe that's. Oh, that's what fell, isn't it? I think so. Don't tell. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, MJ. God, don't be dropping that. Easy. Don't knock over a spy who loved me. It's a bad James Bond movie. <laughs> God. Throwing MJ around now, huh? That's my ticket, $65 on the 12th row when MJ dropped the shot. Oh, I was there. It's like basketball metaphors matter. They really do, Kobe. You know, sad what happened to him. Horrible. It's been sad century so far. Remember him? It's like when Jordan knocked down that shot. I'm sitting right there. Fuck. Pippin's backs are spazzing. I got to tell the story after the game. You know, we we're heartbroken as Jazz fans. The Jazz were good enough to win it, but Sloan wouldn't let Chris Morris stay in the game. You know, he was shutting down MJ. So when the Jazz are ahead... They've had the ball and had the lead. You know they're going to Jordan, or excuse me, going to Malone on the blocks, which they did. Jordan waited the whole series. He was up at the front, and he doubled all the way around the back. And he stole the ball from uh, the great Carl Malone. And called timeout. I, says, I had scalped that ticket. I had season tickets, but I scalped that ticket because I wanted a good one for 40 bucks, believe it or not, because the game was on a Sunday. And Andrew Bull. The people next to me from Chicago paid 7000 That same ticket would probably go for a couple hundred thousand now. I wouldn't go to a jazz game for 
fucking bought me beer, paid, I mean, fuck those, the whole product sucks anymore. So, I told those guys, this game's over. What do you mean? Everybody in the world knows that Michael Jordan's getting the fucking ball, and he's going to shoot. You think he's going to miss? <coughs> yeah, I think he's going to miss. He's going to miss. The whole world knows, but everybody knew that Sloan didn't know how to fucking, I mean, he was just so predictable. Wouldn't put Chris Morris back in the game. Jordan had trouble getting over Chris Morris that whole series. I remember playing blackjack in Wendover with Chris Morris back in those days. Please give me the 90s back. Please be life before Putin. It's like the whole world went shit as soon as he hit that shot. That idiot that owned the Bulls broke it up. The Jazz product all got broke up. I mean, it's like the whole world just shattered. The 90s are over. And Putin is born. Basketball metaphors matter. Kobe Bryant to a trainer from Weber State. The trainer from Weber State. Kevin, you know Kobe Bryant. This is when Kobe's young. Back about this era. He's, you know, he's got that quantum physics fucking brain like you. He's got that spectrum of time like you. And I said, what do you mean? He told some people, including myself, that isn't it incredible how basketball will predict the future? And it will tell you the future. Basketball will tell you the whole future before it happens, Kobe Bryant. I mean, unbelievable. Kobe Bryant's death right before the Kobe COVID pandemic. I mean, it's fucking haunting. Putin's been in power since the late 90s. And look what the fuck the world's gone to. I mean, look what they've done to the First Amendment in this country because of Putin. The Democrats blame their, it's always Democrats, Republicans do the same thing. Both sides blame each other, blame each other. Had to be Putin's fault. You know, they can't understand that people weren't willing to vote for Hillary Clinton. They weren't, they were, they felt that she'd stole it from Bernie Sanders, the left. They were pissed. So they stayed home. They remember what Bill did to the unions. And so in places like Pennsylvania, the unions, just, and you know, Trump had them conned. So Trump, Putin plays Trump like a fucking bad plastic banjo. Like he did Obama. Oh, he played Obama. Well, Obama just ignored him. Let him do whatever fuck he wants. It's like Fukushima. He just ignored him. You know, the typhoon. Biden. Biden stands up somewhat. I mean, what a bloody nasty war. But when you let someone get out of hand, that out of hand, he did it in Cromaria. He did it in Georgia. I mean, he's ruthless. He did it to, uh, she's born in Brooklyn. When he investigated a journalist, blows her head off, and nobody did anything. When Mikhail Lesson was beat to death, I remember him, the fifth time, never remember. Oh, way too close to home for me. Nobody did anything. Do you know who Mikhail Lesson is? The guy who started RT, the old Toss Bravad. Anybody that gets in his fucking way. And you just let someone go. And he's so, the most passive aggressive person on earth. Maybe ever. What are you talking about? I'm not doing anything. Well, we're not invading. We're not. Doing... And so you got really one guy dominating the whole fucking world. When the whole world's against this fucking horrible bloodbath. I don't understand. Well, I understand it. The military industrial complex, you know, the same old thing. When I pop, pop, a whoppy drop, don't you stop at that parallel. You do stop. You better stop at that parallel. Don't you cross that parallel to North Korea to hell. You know, Hell's Kitchen. Do you know about Hell's Kitchen? Oh, fuck. My dad was the old Marine, the Korea Marine. Ooh, them friends of his, they hated MacArthur so fucking bad. I used to wear my dad's dog tags all the fucking time. That's how I got the stars across my face in those days. I was the Peace Act. It was 2002, 3. I fought so hard on that. So I got that scar. They would always, I had those big old blood and guts Marines, those guys would see me. Come here, come here. And they'd take those dog tags and kiss them. Fuck, I knew what happened. Then they went off to Vietnam to kill the Viet Cong. Kissinger, Cambodia, Kissinger, Cambodia. You know, fucking... Didn't Cheney work for him? You know, how's Cheney even got a sweat? Democrats giving Cheney a fucking standing ovation on the floor. One of the greatest war crimes. So isn't that how Obama got fucking elected? He's going to be the anti-war guard. Pop, pop, oh, oppie, drop, they never stop. Hoover, Hoover. 
Never in the history of mankind is any army, is any military ever indiscretionally fucking mass murder women and children till now. It revolts my soul. The United States never looked back. So, look what they did in North Korea. Went out to Vietnam to kill the Viet Cong. Cambodia. Fuck. We're done. No more wars. No more. We're done. We hit the streets. We protest. We fought back. No more. Then the gift that keeps on giving. Where's that book? Talk about my fairy tale book. My 9-11 commission book. Went off to Vietnam. No more. Oh, 9-11 happened. There were Saudis. So we go halfway in the world and slaughter Iraqis. Putin's watching that saying, what the fuck? These guys are busy in Iraq and fucking... Went off to Iraq to get Dick Cheney and friends and Prince and fucking crew. The military industrialized war fucking pigs fucking a big old fucking sack. Huh. Went off to Afghanistan to kill the Taliban. So he invades... Georgia, Cromaria, Ukraine. Who's next? Alaska. Pop, pop. A loppy drop. Don't you cross that parallel. Turn it into hell. Went off to Vietnam to kill the Viet Cong. Went off to Afghanistan to kill the Taliban. Went off to Iraq to get Cheney and friends a big old fan. Oligarchs make it rain in Ukraine. What's going on in Gaza? The Middle East Divine. You ever read that book? You should read that book. So, Putin. Tsar Pupu. That's not a president. That's a king. I've been going after the whole Putin fucking since the late 90s. Play back the tape on this YouTube. This YouTube site's 15 years old. Fuck, I was going off of clear back then. But even before I had in New York doing all that work. So Obama tells the great lie. The second biggest lie in human history. 13 years ago today. We go from Gorbachev and Reagan downsizing. Remember, they were getting rid of all the fucking nukes. We were friends. The whole Cold War was over. Remember, they, those two declared it over. Gorbachev, what took down the old USSR? The invasion of Afghanistan, the nuclear disaster at Chernobyl. What took down the old USA, which now is America? Green and out of control debt. And I like people going off on Biden on that and going off on Trump. Look, they're the twins. They both of them ran that. I mean, in four fucking years, they both ran fucking these enormous fucking. I mean, how can one go out? Because they both done it. Congress is out of control. What took down the old USA? The invasion of Afghanistan and the meltdowns and cover up of Fukushima. Word of the downloaders. I mean, they're so similar stories. You know, we handed the world over to imperialists. We have Lord Bezos, Lord Musk. Lord Gates, you know, Lord Zuckerberg, you know, we have a zero tax rate on billionaires. The oligarch was born in 19, late 90s. There was no oligarchs in fucking Russia. The old USSR, no oligarchs. Well, when they passed out vouchers to everyone, remember they passed out vouchers and then those guys got, I mean, the billionaire was born. And now we're going to block all the billionaires until we find out all oh, what? The billionaires. Oh, oh, I thought we were blocking them all, except enriched uranium. Stand on the state line, turn 238. Which came first, the chicken or the egg, the nuclear bomb or the freaking. <laughs> you can draw a line right here, 98, when Jordan knocked down the shot. Fucking everything's went to hell. You know what the debt was in those days? There wasn't one. We were fucking really, I mean, it was approaching four trillions, but it was starting to head down. We had a surplus. Remember, we were downsizing the military, and Democrats and Republicans were working together. They actually worked together in the 90s, for real. No inflation, that was thanks to the Volcker Fed. Then the gift that keeps on, and Rand Greenspan, cutting rates, cutting rates, cutting rates, loose fucking money, fucking tax the future, give to my friends, GLP, fucking the dams, fucking never seen a fucking military industrialized war pig fucking contract I ever fucking liked. You know, it's imperialism. The United States, Russia, the whole world. I mean, we have fucking full blown out fucking, call it new world order when it's old world order. So, so our Putin's been crowned again. Again. Did you vote for Putin? Clear back in the day. Fuck no, I never voted for that KGB fucking evil killing fucking scumbag rat. Look, car wreck, you're dead. Next one. Did you vote for Putin? Fuck no, I'm not voting for that oligarch fucking thieving ripoff fucking killing fucking. Hell no.
little plonium to the T. Bloop, dad. Next election. You vote for that fucking Putin? Did you vote for Putin? Fuck no, I never voted for that fucking scumbag. <laughs> Plane fucking crash. Boom, dead. You vote for fucking Putin? The next election. No, fuck, I ain't vote for that. <laughs> Shoot you right in fucking cold blood right in front of your face and tells you he did. This election. You vote for Putin? Did you vote for Putin? Oh, I voted for Putin. Uh, exit poll. Oh, I love Putin. <laughs> fucking real. Greatest lie in fucking history. Second greatest lie. Obama told. Third greatest lie. Saddam Hussein has weapons of mass destruction. What's the first greatest lie in history? Nuclear energy is clean, green, juicy. Which came first? The nuclear chicken and the egg. Nuclear energy is there to make oligarchs rich. Price Anderson, and to make bombs for the war machine. What's depleted uranium? Where do they get that from? Nuclear. You can't have a nuclear bomb without having nuclear energy. More than a feeling. Hmm. Been a journey, hasn't it? Uh, you know, I want to give up. I really do want to give up, but I can't give up. It's a long video, but it's important. I mean, so people can look back in history. You know, remember I used to wear my Russian hat, you know, do all those great videos here, but First Amendment's been so squashed that <laughs> I guess <laughs> you really think the American populace is, the their vote is controlled by fucking some political fucking spin. It's such bullshit. You know, just another excuse to fucking suck up wealth. You know, it's not just Tsar Putin. Again, Lord Bezos, Lord Musk, Lord Gates, I mean, billionaires are dominating this fucking world more and more and more. I'll start in 2000. Please fucking give me the 90s back. Please stay in tune.